I've been modeling a lot of guitars lately, and sci-fi syringes and med kits and stuff that's, you know, in depth and, you know, a little bit complicated, at least for a guy like me, and, and it takes a lot of time, a lot of thought. And I wanted to do something just kind of simple and fun uh, and retro. And so I'm going to model this uh, cassette recorder. This is a render of, of this model that I made. Okay, and it's not based on any particular recorder. It's just, uh, you know, something that I, I came up with. It looks like pr practically every other cassette recorder. All right, but it's just a simple model. It's relatively high in poly still. Um, so it's not like a low poly game, uh, you know, asset. But, you know, it could be in your scene on a table or something like that, or in a drawer, or something like that. Okay, so I'm gonna model that. Blender 2.76, Cycles Renderer, so I can use my GPU compute. I'm not going to render in Cycles Renderer, I'll probably just do an OpenGL render. Um, I'm in top ortho mode, so I'm gonna be looking down on it, and I've got my screencast keys on here. So, I'm gonna go Shift A, and bring in a plane. I'm gonna scale it in the Y, and that's gonna form the base of our recorder. I'm gonna go into edit mode and hit E to extrude. And I'm gonna bring it up a little bit, and that's the bottom, all right? E to extrude again, bring it up, not quite as far. That's a little mid piece. E to extrude one more time, bring it up, similar in height to the bottom, I guess, maybe even a little higher. And that's gonna form the top. I'm gonna to go hit number seven to go into top view, scale in the X, and I'm gonna pull it in scale it in the Y and I'm going to pull it in um, roughly an, an equal distance. All right, so I get this sort of this slope right there. Okay, now I'm going to click here in the middle and I'm going to get this row of polys, that, that bit part. And I'm going to go um, E to extrude, extrude, scale, shift Z so it doesn't you know pull them up just outwards in the, in the X and the Y. I'm going to pull on my mouse a little bit and get a little bit of a, of a lip here. And um, when you do that, the X and the Y don't come out equally. And so I'm just gonna come back to the very back, select that poly and just push it in a little bit until it looks as if this is pretty much equal. Okay, good enough. But out here in the front, I do want more of that extending. So I'm just gonna pull that out a bit like that. Okay, so that's the shell of our recorder. Now I'm gonna come over to my modifiers and I'm going to click bevel and I'm going to increase the segments a bit. Okay, maybe even increase the width a bit. All right, that's good. I'm going to leave that. I'm not going to apply that yet. I'm going to go shift A and I'm going to bring in a cube. I'm going to scale it a bit and I'm going to be using this to cut into my uh, cassette recorder to form the spot where the buttons would go. So I want to pull this down a good amount, maybe down to about there, maybe not quite so far, deep enough in so I could have some, some uh, buttons. And I'll, I'll try a Boolean. So I'm gonna select my main model, my cassette recorder, add modifier, Boolean. Now it shows up down here below the bevel. I'm gonna hit this arrow and I'm gonna bring it above. I'm gonna choose difference. And then with the eyedropper, I'm gonna select the cube. I'm gonna hit apply. And I'm going to hide the cube. I'm not going to delete it yet. And the nice thing about not applying the bevel yet is that it calculates, you know, a bevel for this part. So it's already looking quite nice. Um, now I'm going to unhide that cube. I seem to have an old cube there, and I'm going to lift it up, and bring it over here, and I'm going to use this. I'm going to shape it a little bit, scale it in the Y. And I'm going to use this to make a cut in here for where the cassette would go. All right, now I don't have the exact dimensions of a cassette. I could do that, but I don't really care to, to do that. Um, so the thing though that I'm thinking about is whether or not I want to round these corners. I'm going to try without and see if the bevel takes care of that. Now the cassette will go down relatively far. So I'm going to push this in a nice distance. All right, and we'll try it. Select my main model. Go to Boolean, bring it to the top. Difference, with the eyedropper, select the cube. When you see that line there in, in this particular theme of colors that I'm using, it's, it's a white line. It might not be white for you. When you see that, it generally means it's performed the operation. I'm gonna hit apply, select the cube, hit H to hide it. And that would be my space for the cassette. 
Does that look deep enough or do I want to maybe go a little bit deeper? So I'm going to backtrack and select it, move it and see. Yeah, okay, that's good. Okay, I'm going to go a little bit deeper now. Select my model, reselect the cube, apply, hide, and it's done a great job. Now, I'm going to, um, I think I'll unhide the cube again, bring it up because I still want to use this for some other things. Do I? What, do I, uh, what am I missing? Yeah, I'm going to want to put this and then this. Okay, so um, I take it back. I think at this point I can delete that cube. What I do want to do though is go into the model, select just that face, copy it, Shift D, P to make it its own selection, come out of the model and select just that part and lift it up. And I, I am going to make the lid out of this. So I'm gonna go into it, edit mode, select it, E to extrude, and I wanna bring it up just a little bit. This is gonna be a relatively thin lid Maybe a bit thinner than that. And I think I'm going to, do I have to round these corners or do I still have the bevel on it? I, I do, so that's fine. I don't need to do that. Um, so it's gonna look something like that. I'll, I wanna put a little design uh, element on this, so I'm gonna go Shift D to copy this, and I'll uh, bring it up. And I'm gonna scale this in the Y, like that. It's nicely centered, because it's a copy. Scale it in the X, a little bit like that. And maybe I'll scale it in the Z, give it a bit more thickness so I can use it. I'm gonna push it down and bring it up more towards the front. And I'm gonna use this just to cut an indentation in, in this piece, so let's give that a try. So, so I'm selecting this and then adding Boolean. Difference, select my cutting tool, hit apply, and I'll hide that. And I get a nice little indentation in this lid. Okay, now this is a nice piece and it is slightly rounded. What I mean is unhide it, this thing here. So I think I may go ahead and use this again. Let me hide this, place it right down in the middle, scale it in the X, get it out to around. It doesn't have to be the same size, but I'll get it similar to the size of that and I'm going to scale this in the Y a little bit down like that. And I'm going to use this to create an indentation right here, this kind of thing, all right? And then I'll make this piece right here. And this would be like the counter, and then you press the button and you reset the counter. All right, so that's what I'm going to do right here. Let's not forget to save this periodically, so Control S. I'm going to call this Cassette uh, Tutorial. Okay, now, is that's a decent thickness. So let's go ahead and try this. Select the body, Boolean, bring it up, difference, select that, apply. Let's hide that and see how it worked. Okay, now, I see something has happened to my bevel. So I've backed up. I don't know, but I'm going to get rid of this piece. No, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to get rid of the bevel on this piece. And I'm just going to try something. I'm going to try rounding the edges myself. Got to apply rotation and scale first. Now I can do it. I just round these off a bit. I just want to see if that makes any difference. I don't know why it would. Maybe I was down too far. Select this. Select now. It's it's getting rid of the bevel. Okay, I'm not going to do this. I'm going to try try another thing. I'm going to try moving the, the boolean down below, see if for any reason 
it no every time I do that okay well looks like I'm done with the bevel so I'm going to apply that bevel now and it's in there and we can continue all right I actually I might scale this in the Y just a little bit more give myself a bit more room out here okay I'm gonna bring this down okay difference select that apply hide that and I've got my indentation I don't know why that happens I was able to do a number of cuts and maintain the bevel um, I'm not sure it might be something very simple but it doesn't matter at this point I've, I've got what I really need uh, so I'm going to unhide that but that'll also unhide this let's hide that again in the top view I'm going to look down and I'm going to scale this in the X just a little bit scale it in the Y um, so that it looks like you know it, there's a little cutaway let's see what that looks like that looks fine okay great um, while I'm at it though I'm going to take this and shift D and pull it up here and I'm going to see how the corners look if I make this bigger. Just in the Y. And see if it looks good. It does look okay. Scale in the Z. Okay. I want to make a, a deeper indentation here. And I think that will be it for the top. Well, that's not quite true. I shouldn't say that yet. Uh, okay. I'm going to do a Boolean here. Difference, select, apply, hide. Okay, good. I'm going to use this in a little bit for my speakers. I suppose I could go ahead and do that part now for you, maybe. Um, now, I don't know if this is going to bug you or bug me. There, there's a difference in these cuts with the nice bevel versus this. Um, that's something to think about but I'm going to be doing uh, something different with this anyhow and it may not bother people that much the other thing you can try to do is you can try to go in and in edge mode you can try and select the entire edge and then you can see if control B you can bevel it like this and it does look like it's not a bad bevel so I could try Put, uh, doing that, maybe put in one, two segments just by rolling my mouse. Accept, hit A to deselect and come out. And you know, I get a similar effect. You might get some some weird uh, uh, effects on the corners, but I'm actually pretty happy with that. And so I think I'm going to stick with that. And I'm, I'm just debating if I want to do it for this, but I don't think I'm going to bother with that right now. Uh, so I think I can probably um, I, can, I can get rid of that one I'm just gonna hide that one again I'll do the speakers so I'll come in here I'm gonna select this face and go shift s cursor selected and that'll bring my 3d cursor there I come out so now when I bring in a new object it's gonna go right there so it's not like off to the side or somewhere down here so I'm gonna go shift a and I'm gonna bring in a circle and scale it down I want to be able to get two of these speakers. This cassette deck has two speakers. All right, so I'm going to go into it, hit F to make face, and E to extrude. And really, this is just another cutting tool. It's really not even a speaker. Select it all, Control N, just to make sure all the, the normals uh, are facing outwards. Uh, and I'm just going to push this down a little ways. And I'm going to Shift D, copy it pull out another one and uh, join these and then I will position them um, a bit better if need be okay so for example I'm gonna pull it this way a bit and looks pretty good okay these are not going to be overly visible anyhow let's see how deep I don't want them particularly deep so we're gonna try to do another bevel or another boolean sorry difference select these I see the white line looks like it's good select them hide them okay so that's those are going to be speakers but they're going to be underneath something so they won't be very visible 
I do actually want to try and see in edit mode if I can uh, bevel these uh, circles, these, these indents a little bit. So I'm doing my best to make sure the entire ring is selected, the entire edge. And this may or may not work well, so Control B and pull back a bit. And it's looking okay. I'm going to roll my mouse twice and come out and I will get uh, that kind of effect rather than just a solid, uh, you know, very sharp line, okay? Um, Alt H, I don't need these anymore. Uh, I don't think so, I'm gonna get rid of them. I'm gonna hide that again, save it. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I've still got my 3D cursor there. I'm gonna go Shift A and bring in a cube and I'm gonna scale it down like that, scale it in the Y, okay, like that. Scale it in the X. I want these nice and thin. And scale it in the Z. Just want to make these little bars that are going to be in there. I'm going to scale it in the Z a little bit more. Just like that. I'll bring it over to the side here. And I'll do apply rotation and scale. And then I'm going to go into this. <coughs> And in edge mode, I'm going to select that edge and that edge, so the two top edges. And go Control B, pull down, not too much, just you know, like like that maybe. Add maybe two segments. I just want to round this off so it catches some light. Okay, it's a little bit beveled like that. Okay, might even scale it in the Z a little bit more. And I'll put it about there. And I'm going to try an array. I can actually bring it even further to there. Uh, I'll try an array across. Okay, so I'll just experiment with my distance. I'll try that for now. Uh, 48 looks to be, let's see, 47. Okay. You know, I just want to give that sort of screen kind of look. All right. So I think that's what I'm going to go for. And it looks like the speakers are underneath there. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and apply that. And I'm going to take this and I'm going to join it to the body and save. So I'm happy with that. So there's my, there's my, my speakers. Okay. So let's come back over here now to this, to this piece. And we're going to make um, a little counter type thing. All right. Um, and for this, I'm going to, I guess, um, I'll use a cube. Okay, it's going to come quite large. Uh, whoops, no, not a I'm going to scale this down and bring it over here. Scale, scale it in the Y, scale it in the X. And just get it to a comfortable size that that seems decent. Scale it in the Z. Now I am actually just using this to punch a hole again. So I'm going to scale it completely. There we go. Now I think I will round these corners. So I'll come in and I'll select just the edges. Edges, corners, whatever. Control B, pull back. Give it a few segments. All right, so when we make our cutaway, it's going to look nicer. Although it won't look overly mechanical necessarily, so it's debatable if we really want to do that, but let's give it a try. I'm going to select this piece now. I'm going to try a Boolean on that. Difference. Select this. I see the bit of white line. Looks like it worked. Select it and hide it. And that's what I'll get. And that's where you know the, the counter would be. Um, I am going to try and actually bevel the top of this though. So I'm going to try to grab the whole lot, all, every bit of it, and we're just going to see. Looks good. Two segments. Come on out and count your blessings. Yeah. Good. Now, um, let's unhide, uh, let's hide that. And let's see if we can reuse this over here because there is uh, now it may not look good if I if I change see those those edges nah, I don't like it I don't like it at all 
So I'm going to delete it. We need to make the, the reset button. So I'm just going to start again with the cube. And I'm not being consistent as to where the cube comes in because it's simple just to slide it down in there. I don't care. Okay. So what I want to do first is I want to create a space for that. All right. And I think what I'll do, <coughs> I'll either make a rounded space with a square button or I'll make a square button with a square space with a rounded button. Or did I say the same thing twice? I don't know if I did. Um, I think I'll go for a square space and we'll see what that looks like. Um, so this is the space itself and then the button will go in it. So let's do this. Uh, I just want to get a sense of whether or not it's centered. All right, so something like that there. Okay, select this, air, this thing here. Boolean difference. Select my cube. All right, so we got so if, st if stuff like that happens, take your object and either tr if you've rotated it then do a, a rotation and scale uh it might just be scale but i'm doing rotation and scale and you know do you see the color change my normals are all messed up so go in select everything control and to recalculate your normals outside and you should be good to go there we go okay hide that and i get a square hole whether or not we think that looks good i, I am going to to bevel this so i'll do that right now actually at least, yeah, you know, I'm gonna bevel it if I can. Now, if you get that, try to deselect these and just have that part, and it's looking okay. Let's see, Control B. I think we're gonna be all right. Two. Yeah, we seem all right. Save. I'm gonna unhide. Let's hide that one again, and then now I have this. I want to scale this down. And I don't mind it looking really smaller than the space because I, I like that look for this. Maybe not that much. Scale it in Y. Okay, and this button's going to stick up. Do I want to round that button though? Let's try that. Now I have been scaling it, so I might have to apply scale again. We'll see. Control B. With, uh, and then I would I would do the top as well. Pull back, give a couple segments, and then that would bevel it like that. I think I'm going to go with that. Scale in Z and push it down just a tiny bit. That would be my my reset button. Actually, you know what? Scale it in the Y. Maybe it was a bit big, um, but I'll 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 do a little bit more. I'll come into it and I'll um, select that face and go shift S cursor to select it because I want to bring in something specifically to that spot I'm going to shift a and bring in a circle and there it is I'm gonna be scaling this down quite small Putting it up here, even that's too big. Maybe around that size, we'll try it. Go into it, F to make face, E to extrude, I'm gonna pull up a bit. And then I'm gonna go Control B, I'm gonna pull back down. And I'm gonna roll my mouse to make some segments. It's gonna blow a lot of polys, but what the hell. Now, select it, I'll go Control N because the normals are all screwed up. Um, I'm gonna go uh, scale it in the Z, just flatten it out a bit. And I'm gonna push this down onto the surface and look at it from the top. It's still a bit big. Okay, I'm gonna try an array with this. We'll go minus one, seems to be going the wrong direction. And we'll just add a bit more. Let's see, okay, it looks like I can get three at that size. Um, I could add another array or I could just copy these. Um, it's such a small detail that I think I might just copy like this as best I can. Eyeball it because it's really not going to be noticeable if it's off by a little bit. Let's do this. 
Uh, let's just apply that joint. Let's not do that. Okay, I take it all back. Sorry. We'll apply all those and then we'll join them. And then we'll look at positioning this. Okay, and that'll just give a little bit of texture. No modifier on that, so I can select the two of them and join them. Okay, something like that happens, that's no problem. Just edit the whole, select the whole thing, Control N to recalculate the normals. Try not to hit any weird buttons like I just did. And we've got it now, you know, let's move the cursor back to the center. You know, from a distance, you can't really see much, but just, you know, it just gives it a little bit of texture. Okay, so far so good. All right, well, um, I think it's time that we had to had to go for those buttons. So um, let's get out of that. That's not what I want. Select this. Uh, I think I'll select that face and go Shift S. Cursor to select it to come out. So anything I bring in is going to come in right about there. I'm going to bring in a cube. Scale it down. And imagine that this is going to be, you know, one of my buttons. Scale it in the Z. Scale it in the X. Scale it in the Z some more. Okay, so it'd be there. And uh, let's let me move it out now because I want to do something underneath it. I'm going to put an edge loop right here. And I'm just going to select the default position. And in face select one, I'm going to grab that face, E to extrude, and I'm going to bring it down just a little bit like that. Now, I think this will look okay if I add that same bevel. And you know, just something like that. And um, let me have a look at this. Yeah, perfect. Okay, great. Well, let's just move this back into place. Scale it in the Y. Let's make it a bit bigger. That way. Before we get too carried away, I am going to um, add an array here. And that may be too big. 1.02. No. 1.05. Let's try. And let's just add a few buttons. And we're going to have to play with the sizing of these. So let's say I wanted five buttons. Uh, if I just scale globally like that. I could do that. Let's say I bring these back. You know, would that look okay? Do they look too small? Do they look all right? I think they look pretty good, to tell you the truth. So I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and apply that. That's okay if it was there. Um, I'm just debating about that bevel. I want to try something else as well. I'm going to, um, maybe I shouldn't have applied the array yet. I may be doing that again. I'm going to grab these two faces and go Control B. And I want to really sort of round off the front of this like that. No, actually, that didn't take as well. And the reason is I need um, object apply, tension and scale. Let's try again. On this one, probably could just do that whole poly, and that's better. This is what I'm going for. Okay, that kind of look. So I'm going to come in here. Sorry about that. And I'm going to select. And I'll use this. Control linked, and I'm going to delete all of that stuff. And I'm going to work on just this one, and I'll array it again. And select that face as well. Hit I to inset, and just. Bring it in a certain distance. E to extrude, and I'm going to pull it down. And um, now I want these opposite. These are vertical, so I want these horizontal. So what I'm talking about is I'm going to grab this face, 
Shift D, P to make its own selection. Come out, find that piece, just because it's the exact uh, dimensions that I need, at least uh, width, I guess. Uh, come in, select the face, E to extrude, pull it back just a little bit, and I'll, it, it looks all dark, so I'm just going to select it all. Control ends, my, my normals were wrong, so I'll just have a look at that piece. I'm going to bring it up here. Um, I am going to scale it in the Z just so I can bring it down a little bit uh, like that and I might even want to scale it in the Y it's have it a little bit less thick than that um, that's better okay let's do apply rotation and scale and come in and grab That edge and that edge. When did I get that full edge? Oh, there we go. Now I'm going to bevel, pull back, add a segment or two to bevel it off, give it a little bit of a shine. Okay. Position this and I'm going to do an array. Okay, just like that. Okay. Um, I'm going to not worry about that bevel right now. Okay, I'm going that way. Zero there. One, so 1.6. Uh, well, let's just start adding some segments. It's like that. Okay. Is that too crazy or is that all right? Maybe I will bring it up a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and apply that, join that. Now, if I bring the bevel back, does it do anything? I don't know if it does. Um, that's okay anyhow, because I'm fine with this. Uh, I'll just, I just want to have a quick look at whether or not there's anything else I can bevel here. And I don't know that it would really be that successful. I'm not going to bother, but I think what I will do is I'm going to uh, pull this face down a bit more. Okay, now that being the case, let me get rid of that. Anyhow, um, now it's time to array these <laughs> again. Um, I'll try that for a moment. Four, five. Okay, we'll come back. Uh, 1.05, I think we were looking at at one point. All right. Well, that doesn't look too, too bad. Yeah, we'll leave them there. All right, and I guess uh, if we're happy, I'm going to hit apply. And now I'm going to go in, I'm going to take one of these, control L, P to make it its own selection. So I'm breaking it out of that. So I got all these selected there and I got this one. I better make sure that's attached to it though. What happened there? Did I just go back in? How did that happen? Maybe I got to select all of this stuff too and I didn't. Um, control L. There we go. We get we get that. Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> um, maybe wireframe is what I want. I'm gonna try it this way. I'll try to box select it all. And control L, P. Come on, buddy. Make sure I got it. Yeah, I got it now. Um. And I'm, I'll come back to where this back poly maybe. Can I get this back face? There we go. Okay, I'm gonna go Shift S, cursor to select it. Bring the 3D cursor back there, uh, and that I want to select a 3D cursor, and I'm gonna rotate this button uh, in the X. Rotate X, and I'm gonna. 
pull and sort of find a position where it looks like it's gone down. And this is why I didn't want to make those bases too too big, but I don't think it really matters. So uh, rotate X. Let's see if I can go even a little bit more. Let's see how that looks. Like it's depressed, push down. Hmm. Yeah. Whether or not that's even worth it. You know, I don't even think I'm going to do that. I don't even think I'm going to do that. Yeah, it's not. It's not worth it. it doesn't look that good. All right. Okay, so uh, we'll come back to this part in a bit. Let's. We're going to make a little microphone here. Let's select. No, we'll select that. Let's just select the whole thing. Shift desk cursor selected right in the center. Shift a circle. Ah. Don't forget that. <laughs> Switch back. Let's scale it down some more. Let's zoom in. So I'm gonna make a sort of little little microphone here. I'll put it over on the side. Fill it. You extrude. Bring it up a little bit. Inset. E to extrude. I'll bring it down. And let's scale it like that. And uh, what? E to extrude. I'll just bring it down a little bit more, just like that. Edge select. We have that edge, that edge, uh, and that edge. Control B to bevel and just pull back. We'll give it a bit of a bevel, bevel like that. Now, this is going to uh, sit like something like that, but I actually want it inset. So, um, I don't want to use this to cut into the face. So what I tend to do is I go back into my model and I grab, you know, the biggest part if that's what I want. And I'm just going to do Shift D, copy it, P to make a new selection, come out, find the thing, move it a bit. Okay. I can even hide that if I want. Take this, um, E to extrude, just make it a, you know, a bit of a thing. Uh, I make sure the normals are facing the right way. I'm just going to scale it a bit bigger. And that's my cutting tool. Okay, I cut down a little distance, select my body, Boolean, difference, select the cutting tool, which is that. Get rid of that. If I'm lucky, I can even round out, that's not what I want, round out that. If I'm lucky, control B, pull back, looks like I'm lucky. Add a couple of segments. Okay, looks okay. Uh, H, and I'll have all that stuff. Let's get rid of that one. And let's bring this down. And I'm gonna scale it, uh, scale shift Z. I don't think I want it any taller. So scale shift Z and just do something like that. So there's a small sense that it's inserted. And then just, play with the position. Do I want it higher? Do I want it lower? I want it right there. It's not overly visible, so maybe I want it a tiny bit higher. Or maybe not. Yeah, I think I'll leave it there. I'm gonna join it to the body. Okay, so it's, it's done. Just a microphone, okay? Um, all righty, we're going to do some stuff on the side. Let's uh, let's do some stuff on the side now. Um, because of the way I did this, I cannot go Control R and put edge loops in here. I, I can get it there, but I can't get it over here. So I want to cut some squares and recess these on this bottom piece right here. And the way I'm going to need to do that is to use the knife tool. So I'm going to go K, and I'm just going to find a spot, you know, on this top uh, edge. I'm going to go up. It doesn't matter. Oh, and then hit 
space or in or whatever. It doesn't matter if it's uh, crooked because I'm going to straighten it up. Um, I want all the, the points, well, there's only two, lined up on the y-axis, okay, so that one is not, you know, here and the other one's not over there. So I'm going to go uh, scale y0. That didn't work. Scale y0. Okay. And I can move this cut along if I want. So let's say I want to start it there. Okay. Take the knife tool. I'll show you. I'll do another one. There. On purpose. Okay. Now it's crazy, right? So I'll just make sure the other one's not selected. <laughs> Just that one, okay? Scale Y zero. It straightens it up. I can lengthen it out. So now, oh, sorry, I always do that. I can select that as a poly, all right? Um, but I do actually need it bigger than that because I'm going to put a volume knob in there and a, some kind of input, whatever. And I'll do one more section here. So I'm just going to go K and up. Let's do another one right now. Okay, and, up. and I'm not even worried about how big. Okay, scale Y zero. And this one, scale Y zero. No, that didn't work. Scale Y zero. There, that worked. Okay. Um, okay, so. Who's gonna have that? This is fine, just whatever. Okay, I'm gonna select both of these sections. And I think what I'll do is I'll inset a little bit just to get them away from the, the sides, the walls, and eat extrude, and I'm gonna bring them in uh, just a little bit. Sorry, what am I doing? I just want the slightest uh, indents there, just like that, see? Cool, eh? that works well. Now, I mean, you could round these if you wanted as well. I often do that, but I'm gonna do that for this. All right, now let's do some inputs like a headphone jack type thing. Shift S, cursor to selected. Come on out. And let's bring in a cylinder this time. Rotate Y90. Scale it down. And just figure out what size uh, we want these. Make sure it's big enough to punch in here. That's good. It's, that's fine there. Let's do another one. Okay, just like that. Let's grab both of these and join them together. And uh, let's do a Boolean here. Um, difference. Okay, so that happens. So something's all screwed up. So grab them. Apply rotation and scale. And, and the, you won't always see the polys flip like that, but when you do, you know there's something wrong. So select them all, control N to recalculate the normals, and you're all set. You should be all set. Sometimes it's it's your main object you have to do. Okay, so don't forget that. Apply. Okay, so now I have my, my holes going in. Now, there may be faces and stuff on, on there, but I don't really care about that. Uh, what I wanna do actually is bring these back and I'm going to scale them in the Y, uh, X, I take it back. Was that right? Okay, bring them up. Yeah, scale them in the X. And bring them back. And what I, what I really want to be doing is, uh, that's why that's my problem is, um, come in. Uh, can I get into my model? Can I come all the way in and see? No, I... Sorry about that. Um, that's okay. Um, let's try this. Uh, inset. Extrude, pull it in. Delete the faces. Delete those faces. That's good enough. Okay, so i pull these in a little bit. Okay, so now it looks like I've at least got this a bit of a hole. Now, um, 
pull these out for a minute and just have a have a look at what what I got here. That's what I wanted to do. Now we got there. We go. Okay. Okay. Now um, I'm gonna do some more work on these edge. edges always doing it control B pull back give it a bit of a bevel always helps bring them back in to a decent spot like that I mean these could be smoothed as well okay try that now um, let me just mention something I mean if if these polys are bugging you as far as I know, you could uh, you could delete these. Um, not sure about that outer row there. Let's see what happens if I uh, want that. Eh? You know, maybe that's maybe that's a better. A better look then you can see what's inside there I don't know whatever kind of inputs those might be uh, let's do another one uh, kind of like that but but it's maybe smaller and maybe can make it a little bit different and we'll do some volume uh, control here on the side as well okay so uh, let's just do another cylinder first um, uh, I'm gonna shift as cursor selected Cylinder. This one's going to be smaller, like mini plug. Rotate uh, my uh, Y ninety. Yeah. Okay. So that's going to be over here, and then I'm going to do something over there. Okay. Yeah, it is smaller. I'm going to get all the way through. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so I didn't have any problem with that one. All right, uh, I'm gonna bring it back and let's play around with this thing. Okay, maybe, maybe we can do something different with this. First of all, let's make a hole. Uh, and now, because actually, let me move it out a bit more so I can see the back side as well. Yes. Okay, let's inset. Control E, bridge edge loops. It's a quicker way of doing it. Um, let's bevel these a bit. Um, let's go over here, I guess. They're already selected, so I should be able to just get rid of them. Let's bring this back. And uh, I'm not sure what else to do with that anyhow. Really it stands just as it is. Okay, another little input there. And now um, I'm going to do a rectangular one. And um, you know, if I really wanted to, uh, It's not worth it. All right, uh, let's bring in a cube. Scale it in the Y. And this is the question of if I want this rounded. Do I need this rounded? I'm gonna put a circle in there, so. But I mean, maybe I don't want it too big though. We'll try it square. Okay, so that's going in. Just to be on the safe side, I'll do object apply rotation scale. Let's do a boolean. Let's hide that. Okay, so that would be my space there. Now let's go into the body here and let's get rid of, uh, if I can, this back face here. 
And I'm not sure yet what I want to do about those. Um, and I'm also not sure what I want to do about this because I might want to use this. Uh, let's scale it in the X. Let's go in and let's take the front and the back face. And we'll inset it like that. Control E and bridge edge loops. Now let's bring it back and position it there. Okay. I do like that, so I do think that these ones have to go. So now that. That one and that one. So that this would now take its the place of those. Yeah, that, that looks all right there. It's not overly visible, but I mean, if you colored this, it certainly would be. And then what I would do is I would then bring in, in fact, let me select it and go Shift S, cursor selected. Um, I'm gonna bring in a circle. Scale it down like that. I have to give it a face. E to extrude. I'm making it a bit tall here because I'm going to move it down. I'm going to control N for the normals. Pull it down, maybe scale on this edge just a little bit. I'm making a volume knob. Okay, now if I scale it like that, and then Okay, let's uh, let's go ahead and um, uh, select all those. I I twice. Pull in just a little bit, and then extrude individual. I'm going to pull down so it pushes those out. And before I get rid of the selection, I'm going to go Control B, and I'm going to bevel just like that. Okay, so I get this kind of effect. So it looks a little bit like a, a wheel of some sort. And that's basically it. Okay, so that's what we got so far. Okay, what do we need to do next? Well, maybe just that interior stuff and we're done. All right. Put some text on there. Yeah, let's do that. Shift A, text. Bring it up. Scale it down. Position it. font that you like, like in your font folder. I have no idea. I'm going to use this. No, let's use some, some different. I always use that. I have no idea. Let's try this one. That's what it's going to be. Okay. Give it some depth. Still a bit of extrusion. down there you go very nice all right if you like it uh, alt C make a mesh join it to the body and it's yours forever very nice all right so um, that leaves us I think just with some internal components here so let's select this, 
cursor selected. And let's bring in a circle. Uh, why am I having problems? A circle. Scale it down. it knows what I want. I want to use this as a cutting tool. Shift D, I'm going to do two of them. And join these. These are going to be the, well, you'll see. Let's go look this way. I guess that's pretty good. Let's just make sure now they're in. Okay, so we're going to do this. We're going to cut in. So. Okay, took a little while longer. Okay, it's a bit sluggish there for a second, so save, save, save. Uh, I'm gonna bring these back, get rid of that guy. And I don't think I'm gonna do this all at the same time, so I'm gonna uh, control L and get rid of one of them and just, just deal with one of these. It is getting a little bit sluggish, and I'm not sure why. But it it shouldn't be. And so, to be on the safe side, uh, is it about to crash? No. Not sure what it just did there. Um. With some there was some process running no it's getting sluggish again so what have I got going on here what is holding this up that's not uh, yeah, there's that kind of thing eh? well I'm getting rid of that piece Maybe there's something wrong with that. And that whole thing, okay, didn't take, so. Let's do it again. I did hit some, some weird key there, as I just sometimes slap around on the keyboard, and maybe I did something. Maybe, maybe not, I don't know. there and maybe what I'll do is I'll put the, the uh, cursor selected there I know this is, uh, I'm gonna bring in a brand new thing of a jig cylinder right into that spot
All right, and this is where the, the cassette would go. And I'm just I'm going to keep this real simple. Do it like that. Okay. Now, if I if I really wanted to, well, that's a cool effect. I could try to do bevel these uh, edges as well. If I was lucky, I might be able to. Let's see. Yeah, it looks okay. I mean, it gives that kind of plasticky kind of look, which is which is great. Okay, I'm going to do just a few more uh, design elements on this. Um, I think I'll start putting some parts together, though. Okay, uh, now, actually, let's not do that yet. Let's go in here and see if I can prevent that. I don't know if I can. I doubt that did it, so. No, okay, so I'm going to have to go in, select everything, control in for everything. And hopefully it's all going to work. Yes, it's better safe, safe, safe. What's going on here? <sighs> Weird. I'll worry about that in a bit. Um, okay, a couple more things for this. Let's. Uh, um, select that's fine. I just want something centered there. And I'm going to bring in another cube, and I'm just going to cut away at the back here a little bit. I'll make it bigger. So let's hope we can do another boolean without crashing. It's, it's, it's a bit sluggish now. Okay, but that's basically what I wanted to do. Uh, just get, get rid of that. And I can get rid of that. I can hide that. And I'm going to also bring in a cylinder back there. Uh, rotate Y90. In the X. All right, just to make it look like something's going on back there. Um, I could try. Think I could? Could I? No, I couldn't. Not with all those edges. I mean, that would suck. Forget it. I'm not going to bother uh, trying to round those out. I'm not going to worry about that. Um, did I get rid of that square? Yeah. Okay. That's fine. I'm almost done anyhow. Just another thing that would be involved with holding on to the cassette when we inserted it. Okay. Um, I want to round these edges as well.
Let's try another Boolean. Let's say first. Okay. Give it time to do its thing. Good. Let's bring those back. Not bad. And um, let's see if. Um, Scale in the X, that's gonna do that, eh? Let's go in and select them both and go into individual origins. Scale in the X, scale in the Y, scale in the Z. Oops, and bring them down just like that. Just another, another something, that's all, just another something. Fires on there and supply that. Now, let me just see is there anything? Let's join all this stuff together. Um, let's actually move this to another layer and then back in this first layer. I'm just going to select everything and make sure everything is joined. It should be okay. Move this back uh, to the first layer. And this guy, I just want to bring you down. And I suppose I could choose that, let's say Shift S, cursor selected, and then, um, uh, oops, 3D cursor, and then go rotate in the X, and it'll, it'll rotate a bit better. Um, uh, we're gonna push this down a bit, you know, like that kind of thing. Doesn't have to be perfect. You know, it's just going to be like that. Okay. Well, I thought of something, but I don't remember what it was. <laughs> I don't remember what it was. deal is um, you know what I could do That's a problem with the actual, the actual body of the cassette recorder. I guess as I joined it, it did something weird. Um, I mean, I could cut that out with the knife tool. All right, or I could sacrifice this and redo it. Could I? Could I cut it out with the knife tool? How about this? That's the end of the tutorial. That's the end of the video. Isn't this lovely? Hey, it's pretty cool, right? Let me see the speakers in there. Okay, that's it. But as an addendum, I'm gonna see if I can fix this thing. All right, so just don't judge me on this part here because I don't know, maybe I can, maybe I can't. Probably can, but knife tool. What if I do go there though? What if I just go all the way across?
I'm just gonna start freaking selecting all kinds of shit and saying, get the hell out of here. Actually, that might be easier. Just do this. Will I have a smoothing error? No. There we go. It's the no-name brand. All right. I don't know why that happened, but uh, it doesn't really matter. So let's say that was it. All right. Let's say it right there. I love that position. Um, Let's go to my camera, bring this up to, uh, not that, 100%, whatever. And press that, and there is OpenGL uh, render. <laughs> 